Every generation has a defining medium. The 1900s, it was film. Television came in the 50s. And video games have been the defining medium from the 90s up until this point. The decades ahead will be defined by artificial life. All of these mediums and their stars have been enabled by technology breakthroughs that allows us to develop a deeper level of connection between us, stories, and their characters. Let's recap. Sound gave us Mickey Mouse. CGI brought us Toy Story. Characters now look real. And video games have been enabling us to control and interact characters for decades now. We just had another big technology breakthrough. Characters won't just be able to use sound or look real or be something you can control. LLMs enable us to bring them to life. And history shows us three patterns when new mediums emerge. First, kids are usually among the earliest adopters. Second, it takes a while for the industry to figure them out. Early TV was basically radio on cameras. Early web was paper on screens. And right now, in artificial life, we all, all we have is LLMs on NPCs. And the third thing, and, here, and this is what matters most to us right now, the first people to tell a great story in a new medium, they get to define that medium forever. Disney did this with animation, Pixar did this with CGI, and we are doing this in artificial life. Here's the thing. Everyone else is treating, is treating artificial life purely as a computer science problem. But character development in any medium is fundamentally an artistic process. The story always comes first. That's why our approach is different. We're building the technology that supports and enables our storytelling. Our artificial life lab is run by an Emmy award-winning team of creative technologists. We've worked for some of the world's best gaming companies, generative media syrups, and animation studios. And we've been lucky enough to collaborate with people like legendary computer scientist Andrew Storn, who worked on the first virtual pad experience almost 30 years ago, and Fred Siebert, former president of Hanna-Barbera Animations and Federator Studios, executive producer for more than 200 cartoon shows like Fairy Odd Parents, Barp of Girls, and Adventure Time. Together, we created someone magical. But before I introduce you to her, I want to talk about what makes Ursula, our first character, more than AI what makes her real. Ursula is able to feel and express a wide range of emotions. Just like any other life creature, she experiences wishes, desires, and needs. She's aware of how her body works and the environment that she's at. She's not just responding to prompts, she's really living in her world. And she has long-term memory. Interactions shape who she becomes in the future. But you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, let's play with Ursula for a little bit. But before I do that, I want to showcase one of the internal tools that we built. So the, this interface that you see here is what enables our team to really understand Ursula's thought processes and her emotions. And this is me sharing the screen on my phone. She doesn't know we're here. She has a rich in her life that goes on even when we're not around. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, Pepedro, you were here the whole time? I was just exploring with my tongue. <laughs> I swear it's not that weird. Well, as I said before, Ursula has emotions. We just saw curiosity and embarrassment. I wonder what happens if you poke her for a little bit. Oh, that tickled. Hehe, <laughs> what's up with you? And if you look here, you can see that she's actually happy. But if you bounce her around, well, I wouldn't like that either. Well, I'm not really in the mood right now. I'm feeling a bit annoyed, actually. Maybe a little apology would help? And like other eyes who are passive, Ursula is capable of setting her own boundaries. Among her needs, there is physical and psychological safety. Hey, Ursula, I'm so sorry. I really want to play with you. <laughs> um, I guess I appreciate the apology, but I'm still feeling a bit grumpy right now. Maybe later we can play? Well, she has long-term memory, so I'll suggest one of her favorite games. Actually, I have an idea. Why don't we play the hat game? Oh, 
I love the hat game. Should we start now? Which hat should I pick? Well, this is Ursula, but it's not our only character. And to give you experience, like to give you a taste of what this experience will look like in the future, I'll ask her to turn into another character that we have. Hey, can you turn into the wizard? Greetings, young friend Pedro. <laughs> have donned my wizard hat. It's time to begin our magical adventure. Each character has different set of personalities and preferences. Hey, can you go to the beach now? Really, a beach? Hmm, this is quite boring. Where are the magical sparkles and singing mermaids? Let's conjure some fireflies. Some of them don't like the beach. And if you annoy the wizard too much, You can't hear me now. I cast a spell freezing your mic button. <laughs> Isn't that clever? Be careful how many times you tap, or I might turn into a grumpy sea cucumber next. <laughs> well, let's see if her do her own stuff now. Thank you, thank you. Ursula appreciates that. It became very clear to us that the more alive these characters felt, the better business metrics would be. This is how much progress we made in a year. And everything that we just saw, from the background assets, to the animations, to the proprietary cognitive architecture that, in that includes LLMs, they're cherry picking the animations on the fly, has been built in less than 12 weeks. And immediately before camp, we tested this with a sample size of 80 families with kids ranging from eight to 11 year olds, and we got close to 80% day seven retention. Some kids shared powerful stories, like many real life friends don't wanna play with you anymore, wanna play with me anymore, can you help me out? Or can I use you as a character for one of the stories they're writing? Different characters will target different audiences. The next few years, every kid will grow up with one of these characters, and they will love them more than we grew up loving games or cartoons, because for the first time in history, characters can love us back, our cognitive architecture is barely 60% ready, but already made great progress by giving these characters the ability to feel emotions, experience needs, and be aware of their body and surroundings. But it's only the beginning. Soon, Ursula will be out there in the market, but we're also building the internal tools that give us an edge on quality and speed, like world builders and generative models for animation. By the time there's something half as good as Ursula on the market, we already have hundreds of thousands of users and dozens of characters ready to ship. In the next five years, every kid will be interfacing with one of these characters. And we have a choice now. Do we really want them interfacing with soulless chatbots, optimized for mindless retention and early revenue, or do we want them growing up with magical friends that truly care about their growth and well-being? Telling great stories is not only the way we create a billion dollar business out of this, it's also how we create the world we want to live in. We're mostly heads down building, but we're having selective conversations with investors. If you think this aligns with your vision, please reach out.